In this video, we're gonna create this table in SolidWorks step by step together. Hi, welcome, I'm Aryan and I help engineers and creative minds to bring their ideas into reality using SolidWorks with a new and easy approach. So if this is something for you, hit subscribe, don't miss the new episodes. Now the tutorial that I've chosen for you is one of the many tutorials that I have inside my course and I can show you where to get there. Once you become a member, this is what you get inside the course. And when you go to the tutorials catalog, then you go to the tutorials, then you go to product design, then we go to page three, if I'm not mistaken. And we see the mathematical table, which is what we want to do today, step by step together. I'm going to go over the steps. You can use this for free. And we're going to create this again from the top. So I'm going to open a uh, blank canvas, set my system to, I just put it to MC. And let's begin. First thing first, we're going to have to draw a rectangle starting from the corner. And we're going to turn this into a square by selecting two of its sides and make them go equal. Once we did that, we're going to select all of them and check for construction because we don't need a close sketch. We just need some guidelines. 600 millimeters. We're working with millimeters. If you are on an, on an IPS, you could go here and change it to um, MMGS, which is what I'm using, or in this case, custom and set it to 600. Now, what's the next step? We come down, we'll look at it. We use spline and connect these two corners together. Let's just do that. We go to spline, we connect these two corners together and we press escape to get rid of the active spline. Spline is different. Even though it's black, which is technically fully defined, it is still changeable. So one click on that, I see the two vectors without selecting these points because when I select the points, I can both change the length and the angle of the vector, which is not what I want to do. So control Z back one click on that. I'm going to select this diamond so I can only change the angle. I'm going to change it a little bit over here and leave it. Then I'm going to select the arrow, go over here and make it horizontal. That's the first thing over here. I'm going to select the diamond, move it a little bit, leave it there. So it's visible at all times. Now we're going to activate smart dimension, select this arrow and select this line, set it to 55 degrees. And then still having smart dimensions active, select the top arrow, set it to 650 and the lower arrow set it to 500. That's the magnitude of the vector. Now we want to leave it at this next step. We're going to have to go to the surface tab, select extruded surface set it to 100 for now. But the most important thing is from we're going to set it to offset also 600 because we're going to create a cube. We will leave it at this. All right. I can open the step by step tutorial. So you see what's happening here. Uh, everything is highlighted, but I know how it goes. So I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Next, we're going to select right plane, activate this sketch make it normal too. We're going to draw a horizontal line all the way here. So I just selected these two points, held control and set the vertical relation to them, which is fine. Now we're going to go to the surface tab, go to extrude the surface and extrude this backwards. Hundred doesn't matter. We're going to get rid of this soon. And we need to mirror this along a plane that you can see here. It's the best thing to have it ready. So you guys know what we're going to do. We're going to create a plane like this to mirror this. So let's just create that plane. We don't have a plane like that. I'm going to select a random plane. Actually, the best thing is to select top plane. I just selected it, held control key down and then clicked on that plane, which is a shortcut to the customized plane menu. And well, I'm going to leave it at this top plane is selected. I'm going to set it to perpendicular because this plane that I'm going to select has to go through this point and this point and has to be perpendicular to the top plane. This is the only way to fully define this plane. And we click OK. 
while it's selected i go to features tab select mirror and on default this menu opens make sure to open bodies to mirror not features or faces bodies to mirror then select these two and click ok now we can hide this plane and we are left with this next step which is the boundary surface we can see how it works we have to do it in two steps and you can see exactly the features that you have to uh, select and the settings you have to use in the tutorial but we can do it again here go to surface tab boundary surface this is the first selection we're going to set it to tangency to face and this is our second selection all right and we don't set it to anything it's just weird can we just move this a little bit please no we cannot fine then we select direction two now this edge we set it to tangency to face value one again over here we have to set the value to one guys make sure you select the one that you want to change its tangency it the menu adjusts okay edge two which is this one has to be on none edge one which is this one tangency to face at one okay and over here we have tangency to one and this is our second non-tangency just do it like this one 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 okay okay so it's good this is the surface that we want you can see what i did over here let's just see first selection tangents to face tangent to face if the okay it doesn't look good over here let's just show it to you on the word file better quality right we have tangency to face on this edge we have none on the edge in front of it we have tangency to this edge we have none to the edge in front of it so we have direction one and two direction one and two and now we change it to 100 percent sorry i put it on one i forgot the value so we can go up to 100 and we can go up to 100 making sure it is 200 sometimes you have to do it manually otherwise it goes back hundred hundred and now we click OK look tangent tangent none none blue blue pink pink okay now this is the surface what we want these four were only here to help we can delete them from here selecting them and press delete or we can just hide them by pressing tab i move my mouse cursor on that surface and press tab this is all i want okay now close this we're going to mirror this going to the features tab mirror bodies to mirror before i click ok click on neat surfaces this is one and again we're going to mirror these two together select them neat surfaces done now we have only one surface over here we want to create this open volume so how do we do that we go to the surface tab we go to planner surface select this and this edge and then we click ok to close it then we can repeat that three more times or we can be smart look for move copy bodies select this rotate if you're seeing this property manager it's because your options is set to uh, mate menu change that to translate or rotate don't open the translate menu because you can either translate or you can either rotate at a time so we want to rotate around this point around the y-axis at a 90 degrees and we want to copy this three more times so this is what we get the bottom is still open again we go to surface tab planner select these four edges to close it now we have if you take a look at the cross section it's an open hollow surface body which is enclosed 
if you use neat surface on the surface tab select everything and check merge entities and create solid we turn that into a solid body where i can show you it's now not hollow anymore this is what we want you can go check back with tutorial we're gonna have to shell this we're gonna shell it at the value of 70 in this case and we're gonna select all the five faces except the warped surface on the top so we select shell one two three four five sorry the value was wrong 70 and done so this is the base of our table now we continue we're gonna select the top plane activate the sketch make it normal too and we're gonna have to draw some rectangles starting from the left top corner and we draw a rectangle set it to 10 and that's that we select all this rectangle and go to linear sketch pattern set the value to 55 which is some random value we set it to 20 and we can set it to 360 degrees that's fine and now because we don't know the exact value we can just drag this point all the way to this point and it adjusts the distance between these rectangles to 62.89 so you don't have to do the calculations yourself you can just drag it leave it there and then we click ok we extrude these all the way higher than the height of the table doesn't matter we do not click ok because otherwise they would merge into one solid body we want to uncheck merge result then click ok we're gonna have to do it another time you could repeat the same process or you could go to move copy body and if you don't have it here as always guys move copy body select it since we have 20 you could either manually click on all of them or you could open your menu here open your solid bodies folder select the first one hold shift and select the last one so it would select all of the parts done now we want to rotate it again around the origin point which is this around the y-axis 90 degrees copy and click OK so this is what we have now we have so many solid bodies 41 to be exact we want to keep one and merge all the other 40 so we select all of them again I select the first held shift and select the last and everything is selected we go to combine if you don't have it here you can search here for combine and then add them all together while the 40 solid bodies are selected then we're going to end up with two solid bodies the table and these now again we're going to go to combine this time we're going to use common which gives us the common volume between these two solid bodies which is this form and this mesh which ends up to be the base of the table that we want like this all right guys anything else i do from this point onward is considered the garnishing if you want to round according to the tutorial you could just uh, round these edges as much as you want 0 0.7 0 0.5 i believe it's in the tutorial or do five whatever you prefer you could select all four and then it's too much too much or you could do it manually and you click ok once you're done and the tabletop of course we're gonna have to do the tabletop i'm gonna select the top plane make it normal to draw a rectangle center rectangle something like this without any dimensions i'm gonna extrude this for like i don't know 20 millimeters of glass which should be thick enough but we're gonna offset it uh, to a vertex we zoom in from this point and we don't want to merge it so this is the offset it's gonna start the extrusion from this point then this is gonna be our table top a hidden bonus I can make it see-through by first dragging this 
feature as much as I want until these two arrows go away like this. Then I see this arrow. I can expand it. I see this is my tabletop. I can make it see through like this, or I can make the edges rounded or change the color and do a rendering, apply wood to this material and glass to this one and make it look good. But this was the step-by-step -step tutorial. Uh, once you enroll in the course, this is one of the many tutorials that you get. You can see the examples of product design. There are tons here with different difficulties. We have Dyson model. Uh, we have a ring for a bicycle. We have heels, which are very uh, difficult because they are basically surface modeling to its max. Again, this is the Dyson. Goes all the way to create this bladeless Dyson. We have another one, the vertical one. We have that too. The keys, sunglasses, hammer, which is a little bit easier. USB bottle. Oh, we have another table, by the way. It's also very interesting. Maybe I do that in another video until you create this table, coffee table. And that's that. I hope you were able to create this file. For those of you who are curious, I'm going to share the mass property of this component without applying any material, which calculates it with the density of water. I get the mass 79,527 grams. So if you get a value close to this, if you use my numbers and figures, you should be getting a value very close to this just to check if you've done it right. All right, guys, the tutorial that I just showed you is one of the many tutorials that I have on my library available to my students. So I decided to do one of them. And if you like what you saw, there are tons more over there, whether it's in the form of what you just saw or PDFs for download only available to my members. So if you're interested to know how you can become a member and pursue your SOLIDWORKS seriously and become a professional in the shortest time and most efficient way possible, click on the link in the description of this video or on the top right corner on the info card, go to my website, check it out. You don't want to miss that. So these tutorials, all of them are one of the many bonuses that come with enrolling in the course the course itself is not the tutorials tutorials are for practice the course itself has over 80 videos over 20 hours of course step-by-step -step teaching then we go into tutorials we put those teachings into practice so you learn them and never forget if you watch my previous episode on the switch box this was a model that was created by one of my students who came into the course as an absolute beginner and she made that two months into the course. So yes, you can be like this if you enroll in the course. So if you're serious learners, join me on board. Hope to see you soon.